In this video, I will cover the steepest descent algorithm. So up to now, we've looked at iteratively squares methods, such as the simultaneous algebraic reconstruction technique. And uh, these methods are quite robust, but they can be slow to converge. And uh, that's why we're going to look um, at the faster alternative in a later video, the conjugate gradient method. Um, but before that, we're going to consider a simpler algorithm, not as good as conjugate gradient, but a method that optimizes the step size of the gradient um, when you do the update. So uh, that's called the method of steepest descent um, for the case of minimizing a cost function. Um, this is the familiar least squares uh, cost function that we've been using. Uh, and here we're using it for the case of a matrix H. So what that is doing is taking an image, a reconstructed image F, mapping it through H, which is like forward projection, then back projection, and then comparing it to the measured back projected data G. Now to develop um, the steepest descent method, I'm going to modify that cost function to what's called the quadratic programming cost function. And we can just see how it's related just by developing um, basically g minus hf squared. So we just look at hf um, multiplied by itself, so that's just a vector times a vector giving a scalar product in this context, hf transpose hf, and then we've got hf with g, so it's hf transpose g, and then again hf with g, so there are two of those and they're both with a negative sign, and then finally we've got g with G, so that's G transpose G. So this is like an expansion of G minus HF squared. Um, now, of course, it's a cost function and we're looking to find the F that minimizes it. And so we immediately notice that this term here is completely independent of the image F, that vector. And so we've just discarded it. And then here we've just uh, simplified by uh, the factor of half stays here, but half times this obviously just eliminates the two and the half, and so we just end up with uh, minus HF transpose G. And then finally, we just recognize that we could discard this front matrix H here and also here, and so we're reduced to this uh, quadratic programming objective function or cost function. So there it is. Um, find um, the reconstructed image F which will minimize this quadratic programming objective function. And uh, because we're using the matrix H, we are assuming that this is a real matrix and that it's symmetric because we've obtained it from A transpose A, where A maps from the image to the sinograms and A transpose maps from a sinogram or sinograms back to the image. And so that's why H is basically forward modeling to a back projected image. Okay, so putting that into subscript form to help with the derivation here. So this is just a scalar product. Well, first of all, this is HF, so that's just matrix vector multiplication, very familiar. And then the scalar product of F with that. So it's just, uh, it's just this expression here. Just take F, multiply element by element by the output of HF. And so that's just rewriting this in explicit subscript notation. And this is just a scalar product between uh, the image and um, the image estimate F and the back projected data. So this is just a very familiar scalar product, just element by element multiplication and then a summation. Okay, so that's what we want to minimize. So we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to just one of the uh, pixel values and we're gonna label that uh, pixel um, value Fn, so pixel index N. Uh, so we're just doing here the product rule of differentiation. So we just take, first of all, this part. So we just transfer that directly down here. And then we multiply that by the derivative of this part here. And so uh, differentiating with respect to Fn is just one of the terms um, is, is Fn. And so it just goes to one just by differentiation. And so what we're left with is just simply half. And then that expression there, that matrix vector multiplication. Um, and then, of course, we'll do the other part of the, of the uh, product rule of differentiation. So we take uh, this first expression here, just transfer it directly there and multiply it by the derivative of that expression with respect to Fn. Uh, Fn is just one of the terms in this summation and the coefficient of that is going to be Hin. And so we're left with sigma Fi multiplied just by Hin. 
Um, and then the derivative of this with respect to Fn is obviously just the coefficient Gn when it meets Fn in that summation. Okay, um, and because H is real um, and symmetric, uh, we recognize that the order of indices um, uh, here for H and for H here, um, actually it means these two terms uh, completely match. And so what we end up with is the statement that obviously if these two terms match because HIN is equivalent to H, uh, the HIB here when we sum over this index or when we sum over the first index because it's symmetric, it's the same. Um, so these two expressions are the same. So half plus a half just gives effectively that real symmetric matrix H multiplied by F. But of course, we're just looking at one of the elements N in this partial derivative. So that's those two terms combined into one. And then G, we're just saying what's the vector G and then we're just showing it's just the element N of that. So we're just gonna carry that over uh, to the next slide and make the observation that this is the gradient of that cost function uh, with respect to just a single pixel value Fn. Um, and then just pointing out again that don't forget G was the back projected data from the measured data. So it's like the measured back projected image. And this was um, the predicted back projection as previously described. So now we're just gonna kind of put all of these partial derivatives for all the different uh, pixel values into just one column vector and just recognize the fact that no longer then would we have the indices N here for particular elements. We could just say this is a gradient vector. And we recognize it's got as many elements as there are pixels and that is actually a gradient image, if you like, um, that we've got there. So we're gonna call that, uh, that discrepancy HF minus G. That is the gradient image, and the gradient is just the discrepancy, just the difference uh, between our back projected, uh, a prediction of the back projected image and the actual back projected data. So that's all very convenient indeed. Okay, so let's get on now to steepest descent, having defined the gradient of that quadratic programming objective function. So we're assuming here, this is just an illustration. Imagine we just had uh, two element um, vectors. So first of all, actually to point out, I've swapped now from vector f to vector theta, just for generic parameters here. But of course here, they're nonetheless uh, pixel or voxel values. So here I'm considering just two elements. So if you'd like a two pixel image, just so as I could plot a cost function um, as a function of say um, element one and element two of this vector theta zero. Um, and then we've got some kind of cost surface there, which is gonna be the quadratic programming cost function or objective function. And we're, we're gonna start at some estimate, uh, some initial estimate theta zero, it's just a pair of pixel values, or in fact, in this case, of course, uh, all the voxels or pixels. It's just with the illustration, I'm limiting it to, to two pixels. We're starting off there and we're saying, okay, we know the gradient, okay, that's a, a, a gradient image, okay? Uh, and the question is, um, how much of this gradient image, so alpha is how much of that gradient image do we add on to our initial estimate theta zero in order to get to a better estimate theta one um, that's gonna be heading towards the minimum of that cost function. Okay, well, first of all, just writing out what the gradient is, we do know that the gradient at that initial estimate is just by what we've seen before, it's just uh, H theta zero minus G. So we've seen that previously just using the notation F. Um, and then we're gonna progress along that direction. So we're gonna have a scalar multiple of that gradient vector, gamma zero. Um, we're gonna go along a distance or a multiple alpha zero of that uh, vector um, for as far as we can go to minimize the cost function in that direction. And we know that when we've minimized um, the cost function in that direction, we will then claim we've now arrived at a new estimate, theta one. And the key point here is that we're gonna make the observation that when we've arrived at the minimum in the search direction of the gradient gamma zero, it's gonna be orthogonal to the gradient at the new, the location of the new estimate. So I'm gonna try and illustrate that here. I'll do it more than once, so hopefully it will become clear with other illustrations. So here's the gradient vector. Imagine um, this theta zero just corresponds to a particular choice of two pixel values. Imagine that's pixel one, pixel two. This is like a cost surface. I'm just showing a profile for that cost surface. And I'm just um, 
just showing the, the gradient, um, the, the gradient image um, being added on to that location theta zero. Okay, so you can you could always project this down into this plane to be clearer. I'm just showing its behavior on the surface. So what happens then as we add that? So if you imagine we've added some of it, now imagine we're here. If we were to look at the gradient there, it would point generally in a slightly different direction on that cost function compared to the gradient there. And what we're showing is as we progress downwards in that search direction gamma zero, if we were to progress this far, then again the gradient vector, the new, the new gradient vector at that location would be different, but we're still sticking with the original search direction gamma zero. We just keep going until we make the observation that the the um, gradient at the new position as we search along that direction gamma zero, we need to get to a point, a new estimate theta one, where the gradient there is orthogonal to that initial gradient direction. So just imagine as this is sliding down, then this kind of gradient just, uh, the, the gradient of the new positions just slowly opens up, opens up, and then becomes orthogonal only when we're at the minimum along that search direction. Okay, um, so there I'm trying to show again the gradient vector gamma zero, um, and then we want to land at this position theta one. So again, you could imagine just projecting that down to a point in the plane. It's just a two pixel value example in this simple illustration. And when we're there, we know that the gradient uh, at that location will be orthogonal to the original uh, gradient of the, you know, at the original starting position. Okay, and I'm just showing there that it's orthogonal with that green uh, kind of square right angle, if you like. So therefore, uh, the gradient at the new location, of course, just by what we've already established, this is going to be something like a h theta 1, the new estimate, again, minus the back projected image g. So it's this same notation for the gradient, but now evaluated at a new location theta 1. And we know the gradient there is just given by that expression. Okay, so again, this is another visualization. This is like um, contour lines of the quadratic programming cost function, objective function. And we're starting at some estimate theta zero. We've got the gradient of the cost function there, and I'm calling that gamma zero. And we want to figure out how far along that search direction to go in order to get to the new estimate theta one, which is going to be given by the original estimate theta zero, plus the step size, the scalar multiple of that search direction gamma zero. Okay, So let's take a look as we progress along there. There you go. I'm showing what the gradient would look like as we progress in that search direction. And we just want to hit that sweet spot where at the new location, the gradient of the cost function is now orthogonal to that original direction. OK, so that's going to show us how to find theta one then. So we're just requiring that the gradient at the new location where we want to get to gamma one, okay, needs to be orthogonal to the original search direction. So here I'm just calling that original search direction a general D zero. That will help in a later video when we start talking about conjugate gradient, which we'll have some general search direction D. For the moment, we know it's actually gamma zero, but we can put that back in later. Okay, so we want the um, gradient at the new location to be orthogonal to the original search direction. Okay, so that means for those two uh, vectors to be orthogonal, just do the scalar product, um, and we know we expect to get a zero result from a scalar product for orthogonal vectors. So that's why I've got equal zero here for orthogonality to be, to be true. And I've just substituted in for the gradient at the new location, which we know already by previous demonstration, the gradient is just h theta one minus g. That is what the gradient will be at position theta one at that current estimate. Okay, so let's just expand that a bit further. So all I've done here is now substitute for theta one because theta one is gonna be theta zero plus alpha zero d zero. Okay, and so therefore I've just replaced theta one with theta zero plus alpha zero d zero. That's all I've done to go from this line to this line. Uh, developing that a bit further, I've just uh, multiplied in, factored in the, the d0 here. So this is h theta 0 transpose times d0, because that's a transpose there, plus alpha h d0. So I've kept that there. Again, it's transposed, multiplied by d0. Um, plus, then I've got a minus g transpose, 
uh, multiplied by d0. So that's just a very simple um, expansion of that expression. And then to get to um, the next line, what I've done here is I've got this term has just gone across there, then, um, or rather I've kept that there and I've just put this on the other side. So that's g transpose d, just adding that term to the other side. And then this now needs to be subtracted from that side. So it's minus h theta zero transpose d zero. So this is just basic uh, manipulation um, of that same expression. Um, which now gets us into the position, that's the whole point for that manipulation, to solve, gets, gets us into a position to solve for the step size, that scalar multiple alpha zero, um, that we need. Okay, that tells us how much to multiply by d zero by in order to get to that place of orthogonality of search directions. And so that numerator there is just identical to the previous line. I've just pulled down h d zero transpose d zero. Okay, and then rearranging this, I can just now factor d0 out, and that leaves us with g minus h theta 0 transposed, okay, multiplied by d0. And in the denominator, all I've done there is use the, the rule that this product with a transpose, I can just um, reverse um, the order, and so that's d transpose. And then h is real and symmetric, so h transpose equals h. Okay, and we used that earlier on, remember, when we calculated the expression for the gradient. Um, okay, so that's, that's given us um, alpha zero. And just to, again, illustrate what that's doing is that as we progress along here to different solution positions along that search direction, the gradient at each location would be changing as, as we saw. And we just want to get to that point there. And by using that requirement of that to be orthogonal to the original direction, what we end up with then is this overall single vector, which is just alpha zero, d zero. And that will take us from where we are, theta zero, to the new position, theta one. Okay, so we're virtually there now. We can say alpha zero then. Obviously, you can recognize immediately the g minus h theta zero is none other than the gradient at uh, theta zero. So I've just substituted gamma zero in for that. So, um, oh, sorry, that's actually negative, yeah, because the gradient, as you recall, looking at that example there, it's actually h theta zero minus g. So when it's g minus h theta zero, that's actually minus gamma. Uh, we've got a transpose then d zero, and then again, the, the denominator I haven't changed. Now what I'm gonna do is just face the fact that we, we didn't have some arbitrary initial search direction d zero, we actually used the gradient, okay? So I've just gonna I'm gonna replace d zero by gamma zero. Okay, and there we are. That is the, the steepest descent algorithm. It says we can get to a new um, estimate of our reconstructed image, or in general, our parameters, by taking the previous set of parameters and then using this step size, and it's nice to see it's got that kind of negative built in there already, which is just given by um, this calculation of, of this scalar value, okay? So gamma zero, sorry, or gamma k is still, the, that's the gradient at estimate k. And then when we do this, this numerator, of course, is just a scalar product. And this also is effectively a scalar product. And so we end up with a scalar, which is a, the step size for that search direction, which in this instance is the gradient. And so that is the steepest descent algorithm. Um, and that should operate in a relatively optimized way, but we will see, in fact, it has issues because this will zigzag towards the solution, even though it seemed to be quite a good, um, there seemed to be quite a good rationale behind it, but it's still not as fast as what we'll be seeing in the next uh, video, uh, where I'll be talking about the conjugate gradient method, which obviates the kind of zigzagging towards the solution because you need lots of steps with steepest descent to get to uh, the endpoint solution. Thanks for listening.